Okay, for today, we're talking about log properties, and I need to remind you of a few log properties, so I'm going to remind you of the couple first. If I have log base 3 of 7, that can be written as, well, I think you'll remember that it looks kind of like this, but I'm going to try to see if you remember which one's which. Is it log 7 over log 3, or is it log 3 over log 7? So you have to be in one of two camps. Camp snake, or camp, what's the arch enemy of a snake? Mongoose. You're either in Camp Snake or Camp Mongoose. Raise your hand if you're in Camp Snake. Why are they living Snake Mongoose? Oh, oh nobody's snake. in Camp Snake? Okay. Yeah, but like Mongoose is like our yeah. so okay. Camp Mongoose. I think it was the boarding class. All right. <laughs> so, and the answer is, I'm going to give you a snappy saying that will help you remember it because this kid made it up last hour. The base is in the base. Who is in Camp Snake now? Mm, that's the right camp to be in. It oh, is... Mongoose Snake. Nobody knows this. Depends. <laughs> Depends. That's true. <laughs> that's a good saying. Camp Snake. Okay. Because the one that's on the top is on the top, and the one that's on the bottom is on the bottom. And so the one that's in the base is in the base. I kind of like that. That's a way to think. All right. So then can you go backwards from that? What if I said it was log... P over log 7. Can you make that into one log? I can. I don't believe you. I don't think you can. But can you? That's the question. base is in the base. You are correct. There it is. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, cool. Next thing I got to remind you, just because last hour completely had forgotten how to do this, uh, x plus 3 over x plus 7 uh, is equal to, let's say, 4. Let's say I had to solve that. You know how to solve that? I know how to solve that. Do you know how to solve that? That was on your last test. And it's one of the easy ones. This is not the kind with the less than. Those are a pain. You got to like make a number line, find the things that make the bottom zero, find the things that make the top zero, and like all of that. This one's so much easier. So we go through the list, Mr. Servers, solving solutions. Ooh, I like that. It's got a ring to it. At least alliteration. Number one thing I ask you to check for is if you can factor it, you should. So is that that? Now, what's another good thing to do? Clear the fractions out. Could you do that? Yes, you could. So let's multiply both sides by x plus 7. And that cancels that. And we have x plus 3 equals 4 times x minus, or plus 7. And in fact, I'm going to actually multiply that out because I know where we're going to go. We're going to try to get all the x stuff to one side. So I'm going to multiply this out. 4x plus 28. If you haven't already gotten that far, get that far and solve it. Could be wrong, but I think it's negative 25 over 3. Raise your hand if you've got the same thing as I did. Okay, good. Okay, so that's a quick reminder on how to solve a rational. You're going to need that in a little bit. Okay, next thing. I remember this uh, guy was being funny about, uh, or was it, it was a joke about a mom to, a, to a, uh, a son who was acting up, and I... Uh, she said, I brought you into this world, and I can take you out. Kind of thought that was funny. Did you know that you can take out these lugs on both sides if you want to? You can. You can just take them out. And then it's x equals 8. If you got the same log on both sides, that's one of the properties. Things you can do is if you got logs on both sides, they're the same log. And it's only one log. You can't 
if there was like a log over here that was another even if it was base three you can't take it out if, unless there's only one on each side if there was two logs you'd have to condense them first so the condensing is kind of a big deal you just got quizzed on that so i don't think i need to reiterate that in the schoology quiz you just took so so but along those same lines you can bring in logs you can take them into this world you can make logs come in so if i was going to pick a log that i was going to put in on both sides i bring in log base five and i put in log base five on both sides you can do that now i want you to think about why i did that this whole thing just turned into what x x equals log base five eight so we can bring in logs on both sides if it helps you to solve a problem. Just bring in a log. And you can bring in any log you want. So in this particular situation, I made it on purpose so that it would have been super easy to use log base 5. But you could have used any base you want. So what they typically say to do is log base E on both sides. Now that doesn't make it quite as apparent of why you would bring in logs on both sides. Like, I don't see how this helped us very much. But that turns this into an exponent that you can bring where? In front of the log. Do you guys remember that property? That there's, if you take have something on the argument, you can bring it down in front. So now the x got brought down from the exponent to out in front. And it would be x. Uh, and, and one of the nice things about log base e is that you can write ln. ln5. ln8. And then do you get, this will be pretty easy to finish. If I'm trying to solve for x, I just have one extra step. By bringing in log base 5, it was cool because I was done instantly. But by bringing in log base e... You just have to bring the x down in front and then divide both sides by ln5, and you got it alone. ln8 over ln5. And by the way, what's that? Log base 5. Log base 5. The base is in the base, yep. Of 8. Okay, so... They recommend that if you are ever feeling like putting in a log, you bring in ln, because it's fast. 5 to the x equals 12. Solve it by bringing in an ln on both sides. I'm just moving this 12 over a little bit, so there's room to put an ln in on both sides. Bring in log basic, and I'm okay with you using ln, because it is a lot less letters to write. It's faster to write ln. Okay, Mr. Server, I brought an ln. Now what? Did you catch what was next? Leah, do you know what to do next? Yes, this goes down in front. I'm just going to do that. I don't have to rewrite a whole junk bunch of work. I can just do that. I mean, this isn't a test where I'm going to get graded on work. So... I mean, your next test you will be, but right now we're not testing, so I'm okay with saving a step. And then I just want to get it all done. Oh, and what do I do to both sides? Uh, five by LN5. LN5. And then this just looks kind of messy because it's got two LNs. Can you make it simpler? It's log, base log base 5 of 12. There it is. Okay. So in my list of things you should look for on this test, do you think factoring is still on the list? Yeah, still comes up. Do you think clearing fractions is still on the list? Yeah, still comes up. But if I was going to pick a third place, like thing to think, oh, maybe I should try this, it's rewrite the problem. So everybody try this one. Log base x plus 4 of 7 equals 2. Rewrite the problem. You don't want to bring in logs on both sides. We already have logs. It'd be dumb to bring in a log on both sides now. You'd have a double log. But, but rewriting is a great one.
If you don't use rewriting at least three times in this next test, I will be shocked. So where do you start a rewrite? Well, you're trying to make it something to a power equals something. You're trying to get it so it's not a log anymore. You're trying to get it so it's an exponential. Owen, what to the what equals what? Uh, x plus 4 squared equals 7. Circle of logs. You're en fuego. Maybe you got some sleep last night. I did. Yay. Okay. Is that one done? No, but it's not that hard. It is going to be a quadratic, though, and that's one of the themes. If you looked in the, like, the notes for today, like what our goals was or what they were, uh, the goals included noticing that there often are hidden quadratics. This is an example of that. Let's say I needed to solve that. Do you know what to do next? And I know some of you are like, multiply it all the way out, set it equal to zero, and then see if you can factor it. If you can't factor it, use the quadratic formula. There's a much faster way than all that. I'm going to clean this up so it's just a little simpler looking. Can you tell me what to do to both sides? Say it. Square root. But when you square out both sides, you got to remember that thing. I told you this is going to happen multiple times on multiple tests. Absolute. Absolute value. And that means two answers. Split it, split it. X plus 4 equals square root of 7. X plus 4 equals the opposite of the square root of 7. What that's setting up to give you is an answer that's a lot like what the quadratic formula would have given you just a lot faster, because the quadratic formula, although it's effective, is really slow. Just to write the quadratic formula, you have to do kick 16 keystrokes, or letters written on, the, on your screen. Count them if you want to. To write out the whole quadratic formula, x equals blah, 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 it takes 16 things. So We never had to employ the quadratic formula, and we got the two answers. If you wanted to put them together, it would be negative 4 plus and minus the square root of 7. Does that make sense to you? That started as a, well, let's go back to the very top here. It started as a log problem. Then it went to an exponential. And then it went to a quadratic. It's going to happen. Here's another one. Hidden quadratic. Log base 3 of x plus 5 plus the log base 3 of x minus 4 is equal to log base 3 of, let me think this through. I'm tempted to say log base 3 of 0. What would be the problem with that? Yeah, uh, it's an asymptote. It doesn't exist. Can't, can't have a zero there. So I can't put a zero there. I'll put an eight there instead. Okay, so hidden quadratic. So far, I don't see any squareds. How could this be a quadratic? Nico, how do I combine these two? Mm-hmm. Log base 3 of x plus 5. You starting to smell quadratic? You got some quadratic cooking up in the other room. That's why you can smell it. These cancel out. Poof. You can bring in logs into this world or you could take them out. And now I have x plus 5 and x minus 4 equals 8. And this one... You can't just say the answers are negative 5 and 4 because it equals 8. How the heck do you do that? Is this one where I can just like square root both sides or something? No, that won't work. I have to do the multiply it all out deal. So I'm going to save you a ton of time. But do you get, you could make this all multiplied out. And then you'd subtract 8 on both sides. And then it would be equal to 0. And then in your dream world, it would factor. And actually, frankly, most of the time we make them factor. Because otherwise, you're going to get weird answers that have 
the quadratic formula where you got the square root of seven in your answer and it's really weird. So usually a problem like this, when you multiplied this all out and set it equal to zero, it would factor again. We, that, that's how you could solve this. I'm gonna save the time. I agree, this probably doesn't factor because it would have taken luck for me to pick a number here that would have made it factor. Okay, so do you get that that was a quadratic? in the middle of a log problem. We started with this log. Once we took the logs out, it was still a quadratic to solve. Remember the keys there? Set it equal to zero, factor it. <coughs> if all else fails, quadratic formula. Okay. Now, one last thing to remind you about that you have to know for your next test, and that is about exponential growth problems. So, I've told you before the moose population has recovered recently, but for many years the moose population in Minnesota was, was going down. So I want you to write an exponential for this. See if you remember how to do this. There's 4,000 moose. Let's say that they're going down by 7%, but that's not per year. That's over three years. They take moose census not every year. They take them every, let's say, three years, and let's say that the moose population went down by 7% over three years. Do you remember how to write this? I know some probably will. 4,000. Well, you start with 4,000. Raise your hand if you knew you were supposed to start with 4,000. Okay, good. Then did you have 1 minus 0 0.07 for 7% DK, shrinking by 7%? Over the course of three years, what do you do with that? Yes. Yes, except you got to have an X in there. X over 3 is the same as one third x, you are right. That's how long it takes to do that. Okay. All right. So imagine for a moment we say, well, it was three years later, when I'd put a three here, and do you get that kind of as like making that be a power of one? And that means we get to multiply by that, which means we're going to multiply by 0.83. Do you get that? We'll make this shrink a little bit. If you multiply it by 0.83, yeah, it's going to shrink by 7%. If you put it in for three years, it's one reduction of 7%. What if I put it in that six years later we check? Well, and this will be six divided by three, which is like a two. So you're going to have two times where you multiply it by 0.83. And it'll shrink twice because six years. Questions about that? Seem concerned. Did you get it now? Okay. Oh, 0.93. That's what was bothering you. I thought it was this part that was bothering you. Yeah, 0.93. You are correct. It's not 0.83. It's 0.93. Yep, that's 0.93. Okay, cool. So then, let me give you one last problem that is a typical one for how we test you on this. A uh, scientist starts with seven grams of this new stuff they discovered on a uh, asteroid, and it seems to be stuff that will grow. Normally only like biotic things grow, okay, but this is a rock, and it grows over time. So they start off with how many grams of it? Seven grams. And it seems to double every two years. So this asteroid out in space seems to be growing. Like, what is going on? Can you write an equation for that? Sure. You got seven grams of this material that you got off an asteroid. And they've been observing that this stuff seems to double every, what did I say? Three years. Two? Every two years. Double every two years. All right, so here's your equation. Y equals, Coop, what do you say? And that's in, this is important, is this in minutes? What's it in? Years. That way, if I say, well, we've had it in the lab for 20 days, do you, you just couldn't put the 20 right here. 
you'd have to change that into years. Or you'd have to change your two years into days. Okay, you don't want to mix your units there. Okay, that's how to write an exponential you equation. Do you just use uh, 365? That's a good question. There's a leap year. I know. If you're really going to get fancy, well, for sure we should include a leap year, but there's as in 365 point one every four years, right? 0.25. All right. Okay, so good enough. We've got that set up. Uh, I want to do one more, except I'm going to give you the ending value, and let's see if you can figure this out. So those same scientists, they've got seven grams of stuff, and they want to know, it's, it seems to double every, except we're not going to make it two years. We're going to make this stuff even more crazy, like, oh my gosh, we realized it doubles every three days. Because when we brought it to Earth's gravity, somehow that affected it, and... Holy crap, it's doubling every three days. How long until it weighs 1,000 grams? Well, first you have to set up the equation. Then you got to figure out where to put the 1,000. And then you got to figure out how to solve it. All right, so let's start with the equation. Drew Malk, y equals? 7. 7. Ooh, I agree. That's same as two, but you're showing that it's 100% growth by doing that. That's good. And then? Uh, to the x over three. And this is in days. It's just, you don't have to write this, but it's smart because then when they give you another unit, you won't by accident just slap it in for the x. Okay, and then what did I say? A thousand grams? What does that do? Pets. Do you think you put it in for the X? Or do you think we put it in for something else? Ah, so we're putting in a thousand right here. And now we could solve it. Do you get this as an exponential? And therefore we could solve it. Now, you aren't really, really ready for that, but you're ready to set up the equation. Now to solve it, that's a little bit much for today. So let's talk about what we would want you to be able to solve. And that's if there's problems like, let's go to this slide. Everybody go to this slide. Now that was a wide ranging review of like everything you needed to know up to so far, okay? So now this is the new stuff. Do you get how there's bases that happen to be nice enough that you could make them both have a base of two? That's super nice. So then I could just replace that four with two squared and then it's to the x equals two to the three x minus one and Yay, bases are the same. Do you remember this from higher algebra? If you make the bases the same, then the exponents are equal. If you forgot it, you can relearn it right now really fast. It's not that hard. If you can get the bases to be the same, then the exponents have to be equal. Okay, so then this has to be, that's a 2 right there. It's a little, wrote over it a little bit. So that's a 2x equals 3x minus 1. And it's kind of like I just canceled the 2s. I didn't actually, I just set their exponents equal to each other. Now I'm going to take away 2x from both sides. Actually, I'm going to take away 3x from both sides. I kind of like, I almost always get rid of the smaller one, but in this case, it'll be a little faster. And now I can just go x equals 1. See how I solved that? I just made the bases the same. But we need to quickly get over that because you're not going to get easy ones like that in pre code And the bases aren't the same, and they can't make be made to be the same. Like, you can't just say... I'm going to multiply this to make it up to 10, and I'm going to multiply this to make it up to 2. That, that won't work. You can't get them to be the same base, at least not easily. So what new tool did I teach you earlier this hour that we could use? Putting in logs. Putting in logs. Good. Do you remember that? In fact, let's even look at the directions here. I know nobody reads the directions, but take the natural log of both sides. Okay. So let's slap in an LN here and an LN here. Now remember, we do that so that we can use the power rule. On problem two, you put in logs on both sides and then you can bring the 5x down to the front.
and the X plus 7 down to the front. Let me make sure you get what just happened there. This used to be a power. I put it out in front of its LN. This used to be a power. I put it out in front of its LN. Are you okay with that? Okay. Now the next thing, this is going to hurt some people's heads, but if I wanted to multiply this, do you agree that this LN2, if you had a calculator, you could just like type it in and it would give you a decimal. It is just a number. That's a number. LN2 is a number. It's just a number that's not a very nice number. It's like 0.76327 or whatever. Okay. All right. Then I can distribute it in. This times this. And this times this. So now I have 5x times ln5 equals x times ln2 plus 7 times ln2. Make sure you get what just happened there. I just distributed the ln2 right here. I just distributed an ln2 into the x plus 7. Are you good with that? Now, why did I do that, though? Like, how would you know to do that? Because you need to know you're trying to get all the x's onto one side. Do you remember when we solve things and we get X's on both sides? You can't solve them until you get them all to the same side? All right, so that's the reason we did that, so that we could get the X's to combine together and all be on one side. So now I'm going to subtract X ln 2 from both sides. Five X ln 5 minus x ln2, 7 ln2 left over here. And I know it seems like, well, nobody you know how to solve that. Nope. I guarantee you somebody's going to have the answer within one minute. Solve. reason I could guarantee that is because I now have the answer. <laughs> but somebody in here must have figured it out. Do you know what we're supposed to do? What did you say? Say it louder. Nope. Thank you for trying. Yes. I got last hour too. It's got to be at least the 70th time that I got a whole bunch of really smart kids to be staring at a problem and they didn't notice that you could solve it with factoring. You got to factor out the X's. Look, see, X here, X here. See how I can factor them out and there'll only be one X left and then you can solve. No way. Yes, if you can factor it, you should. It's one of my favorite things. See how often it happens, though? Like, you're all smart. You're way above average. We have people in here who are actually geniuses. Not naming names. But people just can't see that you can factor that X out. That's why I make it my favorite saying, to hope that some people will see it. I hope at some moment you'll be like on a test, like say it's the ACT test, and you'll be like, oh, 
I can factor it. I'm going to be like, that Mr. Server was right. Comes up so often. Typical AC... T typical ACT test comes up at least twice. Twice? Yeah. How long is the test? 60 questions. Uh, the ACT has one math part that has 60 questions, and then it has a science part, and then it has an English, then it has a reading. And then all 60 questions? Nope. The math part is 60. The English part is 75. Oh my God. Questions. 75 questions? Yep. It's and you only have 45 part. minutes for the English. What? No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's awful. My brain was dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to this. So, moral of the story is, why was factoring good? You see those two blue X's and we were trying to solve for X and it got so messy and everything, but there was only two X's and you could factor them out to the front. And that allowed me to have only one X. I'll highlight it again right here. See, only down to one X. And that means you can get it all solved. And I know, that was really difficult. But you'll have to do something like that if you want to be able to have a shot at an A on this next test. So I don't think it's that hard. It really isn't. It isn't that hard. Oh, wait, wait. No, we wouldn't have a decimal. Because, see, we ask you to give exact answers. So there is your exact answer. The end. 7 ln 2 over 5 ln 5 minus ln 2. Okay, so let's go through those and see if there was anything in there that you weren't able to do in the future. Do you get that we could put in an ln anytime we want to on both sides? That part pretty easy? Do you get all I did then is take these powers and move them down to the front? Did you get that part? You can move powers to the front. Okay. See now, these were their powers, and they're now in front. Then I had to multiply this out. That was weird. Why did I have to multiply that out? To get that X freed up. That X was stuck in a parenthesis. I like to think of it as in jail. Okay, so it's been broken out of jail now, and look, the X can be moved now. So I can move that X over to join up with these X's. And so I did. So I subtracted x on both sides, and that allowed all my x's to get in one spot. And then I had one of my happy places where I got 70 really smart kids last hour and this hour together, all stuck. Nobody saw that you could factor it, even though I've told you by a thousand times by now that you got to look if you can factor it. You should, because it solves the really hard problems when everybody's stuck. But it's still hard to remember, isn't it? And then there's your final answer right there because I just divided both sides by that thing by the x. All right. Yay. It's always fun to show somebody a really hard problem that I think you could do now. Like if I gave you that question again, not everybody. Somebody would make a dumb mistake, but I think you could do something like that again. Prove it, Mr. Server. All right. You ready? <laughs> 2 to the 3x equals 5 to the x minus 1. Solve. No. Yes. Pausing. All right. So my first kid told me, start with LNs on both sides. You are correct. Lillian, next step. Hint, you need those exponents to not be exponents anymore. It's all right. Get somebody else. Volunteers. Sylvia. So that goes down to the front, and that goes down to the front. Okay, 3x times ln2, x minus 1. Notice I'm putting it in parentheses, so I don't by accident separate those two, times ln5. Now, trickiest step, Cooper. Multiply this out. Can you tell me what I get over on that side then? I'll just recopy this. 3x ln2 equals x ln5 minus, say it again, ln5. You could say 1 ln5, but it's the same as ln5. Yay. 
arguably just as tricky, but since we just did one two minutes ago, shouldn't be that bad. Mr. Pats? Can't yet. In a minute we will. We have to get this to go over here and join up with the other X. So, all right, all right. So now we're going to subtract, and we're going to subtract X, L, and X. LN5, and then you'll be able to do that factoring step for me in just a second. 3XLN2 minus XLN5 equals negative LN5. All right, Mr. Pats, please do the honors. You get to factor it. You got this. Oh, um, x times 3ln2 minus ln5. Yup. And then you just go ahead and finish it off. Divide by what? Divide by 3ln2 minus ln5. Cancels. There's your answer. How many of you feel like you could do that if they threw that at you on the test? All right, cool. You learned something really difficult then. Nice job. All right. So this kind, I would not do the LN trick on. I would make the bases the same. So I'll save you some time and I'll tell you that 3 to the 4th is equal to 81. Knowing that, try this one. 3 to the 4th is 81. So... Naomi, I have replaced the 81 with 3 to the 4th. Tell me what to do now. That equals that. Good. 7x equals, can you multiply it out for me? Naomi? Yep. And if you guys can't solve it from there, you shouldn't be an honors pre-cup, just being honest. You got to be able to solve algebra equations. So that should be easy, right? All right. Let's move over to this one. Do you think you could make the bases the same on these? Probably not. So therefore, what do you think we do? How quickly we forget. Alana both sides. I'm not saying you forgot. I'm saying a lot of people didn't say that. LNs. Now let's not actually finish this one, but do you get what we would do? That would go down to the front. And there's only one X. Ha! Ah, this one's easy. 12X times LN of 1.0005 is equal to ln3, dividing both sides by 12 ln 1.0005. 12 cancels 12. ln of that cancels ln of that, and there's my answer. LN3 over 12 LN, something got weird in there, just a second, LN of 1.05. Okay, work time. Here's some problems that I would skip. I would do 1, 2, and 3. I think they're all good. 7, 8, 9, not so much. And... Because today is the 13th, let's do number 13, but then skip the rest. I checked it. You should be able to do number 13. It's a lot like the one we just did two seconds ago. Is it the same thing? Okay, we skipped that too then. My bad. Uh, then 19's good and 20's good, and a lot of people are going to sit there and go, I have no idea what to do. But if they just remember a server's solving solutions... They'll look to factor it. It won't factor. 
then hopefully they'll look to clear the fractions. And, oh, I can clear the fraction. All right. But when you're in logs, you've got to have a few extra tricks up your sleeve, like looking to rewrite things as a log. And you'll also have to look for, can I put in a log on both sides? LM on both sides? Okay. And that's it. That's all I got for you for today.